let's uh, go to God in prayer as we consider His Word. Father, even as we look into Your Word, we thank You, Father, that Your Word is like a two-edged sword. And Your Word has the ability to pierce into our spirit and into our soul, dividing soul and spirit. And it even enters into the dimension of the physical. It separates between bone and marrow. We thank you, Father God, that your word has always been life. We were all created through your word. By your word, this universe was created. And in that word, we continue to hold to that which Continue, Father, to bring power, regeneration, creative power, demonstrative power, and power in which you would put the enemy under our feet. So as we speak your word, Father, we continue to proclaim the wonderful name of Jesus. And we ask, O oh God, that you continue to cause us to hear your voice and your word that flows through this clay vessel. And that you continue, Father God, to hide me behind your cross. That it be purely your word that comes forth. Nothing else but your word. We ask of God that as your word comes forth, here we stand on the footstool of this earth. And proclaim that in these days, when it is time for your kingdom to be established in the days of the Tantos, that your word will go forth in power, in might. Let the sword of your word, let the fire of your word, let the spirit of your word, let the wind of your word flow with the Holy Spirit. And bring forth all these creative forces that the Spirit and the Word will bring forth your glorious bride and will harvest this earth and bring forth from the earth the establishment of your kingdom. The stone which is not cut by human hands, but that which comes from heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, to establish heaven on earth. We thank you, Father. And let this stone grow until it conquer every name, every authority, every power, until we all bow to the name of Jesus, by which there is no other name. That every knee would bow, that every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Father, for all that you say, all that you speak. We give you all the glory, worship, and honor. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. Amen. Well, today we are on Revelation chapter 7. An interesting thing about the sealing uh, that we're taking place, sometimes God synchronizes a message and God synchronizes uh, many things together and uh, there are several things that are also synchronized on the topic of spiritual warfare you see the angels that are bound in the four corners and we'll talk about some history of that and uh, we introduce something but tomorrow uh, when you do spiritual warfare that's also tied all together about the uh, the angels that are there and uh, also talking about um, uh, angels that were bound, that were released in seven seals, that are separate from these angels. Interesting that God has assigned uh, angels at the four corners of the earth. And in fact, the angelic realm is more, what would I would say, more detailed and more organized than even human society. There are more angels than human beings on the planet earth. And of course, the infrastructure is a heavenly infrastructure, which is much more greater than our human organization can organize. And one of the things that uh, after Marabah, 
and walk our way in the Dead Sea when we came back. Uh, that uh, I have been waiting for the Lord to say, Lord, what's the next thing that you want your people to prepare for, especially as we move into the next seven years? Because uh, when we look at the seventh and seven years, it is quite uh, various stages. And sometimes the far future and the near future are very different decision making. There are some things that you need to know the end goal, you need to know so your immediate future. And uh, then uh, because I, I had reached schedule to visit uh, Queensland for a long time, in fact from early this year I've been writing to G. Joe who is in Queensland, saying you know, I'm going to visit you sometime this year and and uh, March came by, we couldn't do it. June came by, I couldn't do it. And I said, maybe in October. And it was a big maybe. And uh, then finally, uh, the lucky impressing in my heart that uh, it must be done. You, you must do it. And I said, okay, then I'll schedule it uh, after all the Dead Sea, the Marabam Bukave and Dead Sea trip. And uh, then uh, in between going forth, after a bit of rest, going forth into... Uh, Queensland. So it was a wonderful trip in Queensland and uh, 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 I went there and surveyed the land because I knew that uh, the next thing God wanted to do besides uh, planting a church and re uh, reviving the church in Sydney uh, and planting a church, uh, replanting a church, we actually planted a church before that we hand over to, to a pastor uh, that was Cathedral of Grace but we had to plant a Cathedral of Glory in uh, Canberra also and, uh, and uh, the, the, it seems that the time had come for Queensland. So I went to the prayer walk and uh, went through, survey the land, look at the place, just sit down and, and pray and wait upon the Lord. And uh, this is what I did also before I came to Singapore. Uh, I knew that uh, my life cycle was 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. So in 2016, when I knew that there was a cy next cycle, uh, we packed all our things. And then I knew that I had to uh, move to Sydney and then to Singapore. And so, uh, not knowing where to go or what to do, I just took a trip down and uh, I had preached there before, in, uh, there in, in several places before the Korean church. So I just went there and I sat down in one of the suburbs, it was the Stratfield suburb, and there's a little uh, middle area uh, uh, where there are seats. I sat around and just prayed and said, Lord, I am physically here and uh, tell me what's the next place, the next move and I'll pray and spend a day praying and then I met some of those people from the Korean church uh, who, who knew about me when I ministered in their church and so some of them also in time also participated in some of my prayers and so that was interesting and then of course later on we came to Singapore and there was a reason for us to come to Singapore because Singapore is marked to be the place where the seven thunders message is to be released. And uh, then I have to be here to receive the message, here to be anointed and appointed as a man from the east and as a voice that cried midnight. It has to be done here. And so, more or less, the first seven years have been spent mainly here. And uh, then we were in Queensland. Uh, is uh, when we were driving with... Uh, G uh, uh, Jijo drove me all the way up to where he stayed in uh, Harvey Bay and uh, then when we came back uh, we drove, uh, because it's a four hour drive and the flight in the morning uh, and uh, in Brisbane about nine something and uh, you check in about, I always like to check in about three hours before and so we had to start our journey around 2 to 30 a.m. but it was wonderful because from the morning, we just slept a few hours, and in the morning, uh, of course, Gigi took a bit of break here and there, but we were praying in tongues all the way. It was a real good prayer drive. And, um, and throughout the time, and until now, we've been waiting on Lord, Lord showed several things. And throughout this time, I had a vision. And in the vision, I was taken... Uh, like I was taken to a place uh, above the earth and I was looking over the earth and I saw the prayer trip. I saw everything that happened in Maraba, Mukave and all those things. And as I was watching what happened and, and a group of us were there, 
But even though there were just a, a group of us that were there, about uh, 70, uh, 65, 70 odd people, uh, they were also the spirits of those of the 500 and the 700. And they were also there, even though they're all parts of the world, as you know, uh, messages reached out to about 10,000 people online. And so I saw that, that a, lot of people, a lot of things were flowing out to all the people. So those of you who uh, were online, who did not get to join us at Maraba Mukave, uh, you were there in spirit. And uh, as soon as you're part of the move, you were there in the move. And uh, then as I was watching everything, uh, an angel appeared that is, uh, here there is a ceiling. And in chapter 7, you see it's related to chapter 7. In chapter 7, there was a ceiling that was done. And uh, the 144,000 were sealed. And then there was uh, a saying, when the Lord says, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God on their forehead. And it did not mention uh, the angels that were doing the sealing. But there was a specific group of angels, and they are in charge of sealing. And this angel, sometimes he appear with uh, 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 ink, some sort of, uh, of a container of ink and everything is spiritual and then there's something that look like a, uh, uh, an ancient type of uh, uh, instrument that they used to dip in the ink and seal and so there was this angel that appeared and that as the vision was continuing and he stood towards the left and the throne of God was there in the distance and was over the earth. And then, uh, as this angel was saying, and then the Lord says, Within the next two years, which is 2019, and we are moving to 2020, and also 2000, uh, in 2020, these two things, September and February, February are related. And... Uh, I talk about the relationship maybe uh, later on uh, tomorrow night in all night prayer, but uh, uh, during these two years, a lot says that those who are the call and the chosen must take the necessary steps to be where they will be by the year two thousand twenty-two. And we're talking about physical. So looking backwards, and this part is me responding because the other part of the message I will go back to. Uh, imagine where you'll be in 2022. If you do not know yet, ask the Lord. He will show you. And He will show you where you'll be in 2022. Now it doesn't mean that that necessary is the place for the rest of your life because there are many, many other uh, things to do. But it means that in these next seven years, which begins in the year 2020, everyone who is part of this move will have to begin to pray about where they will be in the year 2022. And the reason is this. After the Lord gave the message, I saw uh, this angel and a group of them he was like the head angel of the one who seal uh, in charge of sealing and um, then he takes uh, i saw like uh, it happened so fast then vision can happen very fast so it can absorb very fast and, and it could be like one hour or, or, or years of things happening and you're just watching like a very fast rapid movie and i saw like many of us going out to all over the places that we knew where god wants us to be and some of us went to places uh, to survey, to visit, uh, even as a tourist, you know you're going to be there. Or places you're going to migrate to, places where you know you're going to be based from. And then some of us build uh, altars in a place. And then some of us just walk and survey the place. And uh, some of us just uh, went there to a different part of the, uh, of the country where they're supposed to be. And they just uh, found a place, in the, some in the, near the sea, some near a valley, some in the mountain, and they just stood and prayed. 
But when they started to either build altar, prayer walk, or stood in a place and pray, and spend some time where they sense that God wants them to be, I saw this angel took the seal and marked something upon the person. Mark something upon the person. And then I saw that when the mark came, that the natural, uh, there were another group of angels that came. That is, uh, and these angels are similar to the angels that are assigned when you build an altar. Do you know that sometimes when you build an altar, it doesn't always happen? Uh, sometimes when you build an altar, and a special angel is assigned to watch over the altar. Do you know that all the altars in the world that we build, there's a special angel assigned? So there are angels that are assigned over the altar. So this was a different group of angels. There's a group of angels that were in charge of sealing. And then, then after they seal, there was another group of angels. It looks like similar to the type of angels that were assigned to watch over altars. That they, they just went there and they just stood there. When is it? Whether, when, once the angel marked the, the mark upon uh, the individuals which is you all. And the angel, when the angel seal it, the other angel that was assigned looked like a type of ministering spirits that will, will bring about uh, all the things necessary for your migration, all the things necessary uh, for you to be able to go to the country, all the things and natural doors that you need. And, and these are the angels that especially God says, waiting to be assigned when you go forth on this word. So that when you begin to visit, you got to be in the, of course you got to seek God's perfect will. And it must be exactly like the Holy Spirit led you. And I saw thousands go all over the place, even though we are only about 65, 70 people. But thousands go all over because of the message going forth. And when they go forth, for some, the moment they put their, their, their feet upon the ground and pray over, the seal came upon them. Uh, and I'll talk about it afterwards if we have time. There are many layers of seal. Do you know when you're born again, you were sealed? Then you can be sealed for different things. The seal that came on 144,000 was a special seal. And there's a seal for different, different things. And so, the moment they were sealed, the other type of angel was released. The angel that will be planted, and I saw uh, this angel go to uh, altars that some of them build, because not everyone build altars, and this angel go to uh, the place where your future home is going to be. Even though you haven't got the home, haven't bought a home, haven't stayed a place, the angel went there first. And by the angel standing there, it keeps a place for you. Uh, and sometimes the angel will go to a high hill over the place where you're going to stay. Or many, because I saw it in flashes, thousands, thousands of events happening for individuals. So those angels are, are going to be released and about to be released. There is a ceiling upon where you're going to be in 2022. And with that ceiling, there is a release of the angels... Uh, that, will, that will work together with the ministering spirits that take care of your natural life and uh, full glory shelter. That will bring about the, all the natural things, including, I believe, paperwork, documentation necessary for you to be able to move into the country, the place, or the position you're supposed to be physically the very place you're going to stay, the very uh, town you're going to live in, the very country you're going to live in, in 2022. So, when I was watching all those things, I said, Lord, some people could do it on their own. Some people, you know, with a normal angel. So, why is this happening? The Lord says, there's an acceleration to open the door. And doors that were closed will be open. Things that were impossible for you become possible. That's what that's your blessing and the reward that the Lord gives. So that's a uh, message delivered, and I will try to repeat again tomorrow night. And uh, 
So talking about these angels that are sealing, we go side by side on some of the things. See, there are different angels assigned for different things. And I saw that, and that's the message and the visions. There are many other visions, and uh, so, but that's the, the, the part that is uh, for public consumption to be released. And uh, it says, and remember this also, that uh, uh, there are many other, other visions that will reveal in different time, when the time comes. It says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth. And it's a long time since we teach chapter 6. So uh, remember, what happened in chapter 6 are all the seals being opened one by one by the Lord. The four horses, you know, everything, and one after the other. And um, finally, remember when he opened the sixth seal, they were there. Because when he opened the seventh seal, there's silence for some time. So this is still within the sixth seal. After all those events of cosmic disturbances, and when all the seals were open, uh, everything started happening in chapter, and it says, along with this, with these things happening, after these things, the things that happened during the sixth seal, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four wings of the earth. Now, these are the good angels, different from the bad angels. The bad angels were the ones that were uh, at the Euphrates, and uh, there's a different group of angels. Perhaps tomorrow we might talk about them. We talk about spiritual warfare and different angels and what they do. But these angels are the good angels. And, and these are the angels that I saw also. Strangely, uh, when I saw this vision, I saw uh, the angels at the four corners of the earth. And uh, it is like uh, uh, they were positioning things. Uh, and causing different things to happen, and they're also in charge uh, weather angels. They are working together with weather angels who are family with. And so they saw the four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. Then the, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And obviously, world weather changes from that. Uh, we always try to explain world weather changes by natural events. Uh, solar flare from the sun, magnetic pool, here and there, and all those things. But they're actually angels too. Involved. And there must be. It's not just the natural earth. There must be. Because the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, that uh, when the children of Israel sinned and began to worship idols and turn away from the Lord, the Lord says there will be no rain. The, the sky will turn to brass. Obviously, it is not just natural phenomena, but it is also angels involved. So you talk about global warming and all this. You know, the one factor that never factor in the global warming, angels. Angels. And the angels that can change the whole weather. And when some of these angels are in the pristine zone where we're going to uh, do the pristine zone. When we do the pristine zone, because of the presence of these weather angels, that section is different. Obviously, when Elijah prayed for the rain to stop and then later for the rain to start, angels are also involved. And you also know about the story of how King Saul uh, went and killed some of the Gibeonites, or with Joshua, I made a covenant with. And uh, then as a result, there was a famine. And then under the time of David, the famine occurred. So a, a something that was the same later on, it caused the, world, the weather change. In. And then only when Saul's descendants were killed, some of them were killed, then the famine was released. Was it global warming or something like that? No, angel, angel. Now, as a, as a, on the scientific side, and because I am more a scientific person, uh, of course there are causes, uh, carbon dioxide and things that humans do, that global warming, that, that is a natural cause. And, uh, but uh, and humans have affected the earth. We need to recognize that. To deny that is to uh, deny a true fact. Uh, but I always point people to this fact. Even on Mars, 
Mars also got global warming. The temperature of Mars today is higher than it was a uh, thousand year, odd years ago. So the global warming is a whole solar system. It's not just, it's not just the planet Earth. Of course, the human beings on Earth added to that too. And, and must have added something to make it worse. You know, you look at the plastics and the rubbish, it's all over. You know, humans, we think humans are plastic so small, but you look at the oceans today, everywhere got plastic now. Even though the ocean covers a good part of the earth. So we recognize the natural, but the most powerful influence are angels. Angels can totally change the world weather system. The, the world never count on that and they're under the command of god it says and i saw another angel ascending from the east notice from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angel to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea that means it could bring judgment but before the judgment came it says in in uh, West Street, say, harm not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. On the forehead. There are several seals on our forehead. I remember how our forehead also got the name of the Father when you're one of the overcomers. Name of the Father and uh, uh, na the new name of Christ, which is Lamb of God. You put that Lamb of God and other things. So a lot of things are stored, information is stored there. And of course we know the enemy got his own seal. Remember the mark of the beast. And uh, so that's another thing, either the forehead or on the right arm. says, and I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 uh, 12, were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 sealed. Names that are missing, Simeon and Dan, two are missing from the original tribe. So the original tribe had uh, Simeon and Dan, and then Joseph was one tribe. But now if you look carefully, uh, Joseph got uh, uh, two tribes because there was uh, uh, more than that actually. Manasseh that is mentioned there in verse uh, 6. In verse 6, there's Manasseh. We just look at verse 6. Oh no, Simeon is there. Yeah, Simeon is there. So Dan is not there, and uh, two tribes are missing. No, Ru. Right, or Reuben? Oh, Reuben had. Yeah. Two. You know why there are two? Because you have the 12 normal natural tribes plus two extra from Joseph. Remember Manasseh and Ephraim. So you got 14 names. Out of 14 names, the names keep changing through from, from uh, Genesis to Moses' time. In Moses' time, Joseph disappeared. And then Joseph was represented by his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. So you, and then uh, here, can you find a tribe of Levi inside? Yes, he's also still there. So out of 14 names, we know one of the missing names is Dan, the tribe of Dan. There's another tribe missing. They have become a spiritual metaphor. Can you find a tribe of Ephraim? There's no tribe of Ephraim. Is that Ephraim inside? Ephraim disappeared, correct? 
Now, many scholars have studied this. And they go all the way back, since we are teaching the book of Genesis thoroughly, they've gone all the way back to Genesis, when the prophecy was first given on the deathbed of, um, of Jacob. And he predict in verse 9 and 10 that Judah will be king. Judah is a lion. It says, Judah is a lion swell from the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. You know, the scepter is a king's scepter. So the king shall arise from Judah. No better, these prediction, predictions come forth. And um, then he predicts all the different people. Then he comes to Dan. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. And true, Dan was one of the tribes. And uh, the names changed again in Moses' time. The original twelve was the original twelve sons of Jacob, who became Israel. So that is the original. Then in Moses' time, the tribe of Levi disappeared and scattered among the cities because he became a priest. There was a reason why. There is a reason why a tribe disappeared. So when you study the reason why the tribe disappeared, it will give you the clue. Levi was dispersed among the people. Joseph disappeared and replaced by his two sons. Remember, every time two must get out. So Manasseh and Ephraim became a tribe. So Joseph was in them. But why did Joseph disappear? Why did Levi disappear? Because he became priest. And the priest doesn't have one, one area, the whole country, uh, where the cities are. Remember the refuge cities? The refuge cities are usually the cities where the priests are also. Go give them and scatter them. And it was not a punishment. For Levi, it was not a punishment. It was a reward. It was a reward for standing together with Moses when the people were falling to sin. And they stood with Moses because they worshipped the golden calf. And as a result, they were rewarded. Only they can become priests or serve with the priests. Even if only Aaron and Jacob can become priests, but they can serve with the priests. They were part of the priesthood tribe. So they were rewarded by being scattered among them, the tribe. It was a reward, not a punishment. Why did Joseph disappear? Because Joseph represented Christ. There are so many things. Joseph was thrown into the pit. Jesus went into the center of the earth. Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. Jesus is betrayed by his own people. He continued. And he, Joseph was rejected by his brothers. Jesus was rejected by the Jews. And by the Pharisees. So the similar thing. So because he became a metaphor or allegory of Christ, he became a prophetic act that is there. So remember, in a prophetic act, even the imperfect is represented. Then when you come to the uh, this area then, there's a second part that says, then shall be a serpent by the way, a viper by the path that bites the horse's heel, so that his rider shall fall backwards. And because of this verse, long ago when I studied the book of Revelation, my first encounter with uh, Revelation interpretation was when I was in the Baptist seminary, and I was reading these ancient books by the, by the Nicene fathers. And they were writings that were done in the first 300 years of Christianity. From about the time of Paul, which became our thing, plus other writings that were recorded. And some are pseudo-gospels and all that. Uh, some are true, some are not true. Then there were the writings of the early church fathers, uh, Tertullian, and uh, then you have... Uh, uh, a lot of all these early church fathers, uh, uh, there was one called uh, Justice or something, all the different, the first 300 years, and among the writing was uh, 
exposition on the book of Revelation. And in that exposition, they recognize the two witnesses as Enoch and Elijah. And also in the book of Revelation chapter 7, they recognize that the missing tribe of Dan was because they suspect that the Antichrist came from that line. And so from that time onwards, there was always this interpre that interpretation. The oops, on the shortcut. Ah, come on, yeah. You're going back to Revelations? Hang okay. on, I punch it in the way. Okay. So, the missing track of Dan was always, uh, today's scholars also believe that it, that it was a symbol of the Antichrist. Not condemning the tribe of Dan, but more of a symbolic prophetic gesture. That because the serpent that represents the enemy is not allowed. And so just represent that. But today, it's been scattered and some of the Israelites don't know which tribe they are. Some do. Some the records are pretty good. And because uh, that is the Bible that is there. You know, all revelations, whatever vision we have, whatever dreams we have, must submit to the word. Always. And um, so I remember even the early days of the uh, this revival when it's under the first seven thunders. And when he came to me and he says, Oh, actually, yeah, I, I, I don't see all the tracks anymore. You think that the book of Revelation chapter 7 changed? I look at him and say, No, 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 cannot, cannot. The 12 tracks still must be there. Because the Bible says it's there, surely God by predestination will preserve them. So he said, No, 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 they are still there. Except today, cannot recognize. Because he said, Most of them seem to be tracks of Manasa. I said, no, 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 no. Maybe only God knows the genealogy. Then when we go back to heaven, we find, yeah, they're all from the 12 track. So I said, no, 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 no. All vision must submit to that, even though you only see the track. And he, 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 I mean, he, in the vision, he only saw about 144,000. He saw part of it. And he's claiming that, you know, uh, not all the tracks are represented. So I said, no, no, no. Whatever thing, just take care that the word of God is correct. And then there was another part. Towards the end part when more and more errors started coming. Because, you know, uh, uh, from the beginning, he was shown a book. The left side is clear, but the right side is always not clear. And sometimes nonsense. And you know why? Because the right side needed me. I'm the scribe. And the Lord trained me. The Lord trained me and caused me to meditate the word until the word is inside. And uh, not, I'm not perfect yet. I'm still on the way to perfection. But when we come to the Bible, that's it. Walking Bible. So he needed that. And he himself knew it. And so at one point towards the end, just before the rebellion happened, I began to see funny things. And then one of the things he saw was, says, Shem had 12 sons. He gave me all the names. Download. And he said, the Bible does not say Shem has 12 sons. He check the Bible. He got less sons than that. So I said, okay, I take that and I put it into consideration. You know, I said, maybe after the Bible right, he got extra sons. Maybe some of them were, you know, were his grandson considered his sons. You know? So I tried to help that there is a possibility. We're not trying to reject that. But again, I said, this thing cannot be shared. That's why in all the downloads that I release, I never release that. I can tell you, my policy in releasing downloads is this. All downloads are always released, with the exception of when it's not in line with the word, to when it's of personal nature, not for everybody. That's it. Otherwise, I got no criteria for that. Of course, now we got a council, international council, which handles the revelations. <laughs> I'm so happy. You know, too much burden on me. So, pass it all. And I would 
submit and give to the council myself too, which is good. So sometimes if I got one, I would say, okay, just keep this aside, kind of thing. But here we are talking about 12 tribes. They, after Moses, remember there are 14 names. All the 12, 12 tribes plus two extra names, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, I'm coming to you. So there are always 14 names. And you cannot fit 14 into 12, two always missing. So in Moses' time, the two missing was Levi as a reward. He scattered them through the cities. And Joseph because he represents Christ. Yes, question. So, um, oh, we need, we need the microphone. Ah, we're on the microphone. Yes, thank you. So, those online came here. So, the, the 144,000, that number you interpreted literally. literally. Yes, literally. Exactly, so, 12,000 from each tribe. So but today, they might not know which tribe they are. So but in so the Spirit of God, no. You would say Dan doesn't have a portion. He's no, symbolically. Remember, these tribes are symbolic. Okay. They're symbolic. Not because all the tribe of them people are bad. No, 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 no. It's sometimes God does things as a prophetic act symbolically. And I exclude them, the tribe of them. So is it, I mean, is it possible that some tribes have less than 12,000 to make? Like <laughs> so Dan can have a little bit? They can possibly, because in the Bible, there's adoption into the tribe. There's such a thing, adoption into the tribe. And when, oh, thank you. <laughs> this, this calling really read my mind. And uh, uh, these are the changing, you know, the things that keep changing. And I divide them into all. You can have a study of this again. Those of you who need this chart, you know, right, Colleen, you can send it to you. And uh, this is the original order of first born to last born. This is from the oldest to the youngest, exactly by age. This one is uh, slowly changing and Joseph disappeared. He was replaced by his two sons here. And then in uh, Deut Deuteronomy 33, in the blessing of Moses, suddenly uh, this one is replaced and then Levi comes back here, leave, always now got 14. Because you got the 12 names plus Joseph got two sons, so you always got 14 names. So always when you put 12, 2 will be missing. So here, missing was Levi, uh, because Levi became the priest, or the tri tribe of priesthood. And missing here is Joseph, because Joseph became a representation of Christ. And uh, then, so that's why they mean. So the missing here is a good missing, not a bad missing. And then when you come to here, Ephraim and Manasseh disappear and uh, suddenly you got Joseph mentioned and blessed twice. He got double blessing. But if he got a double blessing from the original tribe, definitely three tribes are missing. Ephraim, Manasseh plus one more. So on Deuteronomy 33, do you guys see anybody missing? The clue starts with an S. C C Simeon. Simeon is missing. So here Simeon is missing because of a certain judgment that was there. So suddenly missing, not mentioned. And he did mention something about what he did. And then, this, because Deuteronomy 33 is like a preparation to go into the promised land. So, there's a, something else. Then, Revelations, which we're studying today. In Revelations, you have, you have Joseph put back. Remember, you always got 14 names. Simeon is back! Yay! Redemption. And of course it ties to this uh, breastplate and all. Remember the breastplate? The breastplate got all the names of the 12 tribes. But the, because there are 14 names added, and only 12. So we know that the tribe of Dan is missing. And that's why we went to the book of Genesis. 
in Genesis 14, 49, there's a prediction about the serpent, and that is prediction about the Antichrist. The Antichrist comes from the tribe of Israel, and he will have Jewish blood somewhere along the line. Might be forgotten, but he will have Jewish blood. And another person missing here. Start with E. Ephraim. And when I read the early church fathers' writings on Revelation, they did not explain what Ephraim is missing. But in this end time, we know. Because Ephraim represents the church. It also represents the church. Ephraim. And um, so some of the prophecies on Ephraim point to the church. That is the clue you can take from here in looking at the 12 tribes. Right, let's go on to Revelations, finishing on the 12 tribes. And after the 12 tribes were sealed, it says, After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, and everything. Let's read from here. Great multitude which no one could number, all nations, tribe, people, tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with the white robes and palms in their hands, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation is in our God, who sits upon the throne and in the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, verse 12 saying, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Now you say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are again the seven spirits of God. It's a sevenfold blessing. So hidden in here is the seven spirits of God. But when you look at it, you say, okay, where do I feel blessing? Glory, of course, leads to glory. There's wisdom inside. And uh, there's thanksgiving and honor and power and might. It doesn't quite seem to be the seven spirits, but it is. You can see power there in some form. And, uh, and blessing here actually tied. What you do is this verse can tie you to many other attributes of the seven spirits. Like mercy and blessing are tied together. Because that's where all blessings come from the truth. And so some of these, like Thanksgiving, you say, wow, where, where, where it fits. When you look at it very carefully, Thanksgiving is linked to life. When you are not thankful, everything dies. Remember Romans 1? Why do the people who started going into uh, homosexuality all die? It says they were not thankful to God. And remember the discovery of Dr. Imoto? When the water was thankful, it gave more life. <laughs> then when, 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 when it be negative, even the water you drink become negative, it began to eat up your life. Then you got less energy. So this one verse is very powerful. We could teach a whole sermon from this verse. But we got to cover the whole chapter. So we rush, rush, rush. Anyway. But give you the clue. Thanksgiving is related to life. If you want a lot of energy, a lot of life, give thanks. Give thanks. Always, no matter what happened in your life, look for something to thank God. Thank God. And you keep giving thanks, you have more and more life. That is there. And power, of course, relates to power. And uh, then when you look, what is that? Where else? What else? Honor relate to love. So when you love, you honor. When you don't love, you dishonor. So whenever love is there, no matter what, you can always still treat each other honorably. When you take love out, do you see how people treat each other with no love? You see how the world fight, right? No love. Right? When you have no love. You cannot even treat each other with respect. But when love is there, honor is there. And then when you talk about power and might, actually both are powerful. But you know what is also powerful? Peace. Peace is 
Almighty. Because when peace comes, Satan is crushed under his feet, under your feet. It is when the peace comes that you actually win, correct? In many countries, they fight war and always fighting, 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 fighting. Country cannot prosper. People always suffering. People always dying. Not enough food, not enough all those things. And the country cannot prosper without peace. A home cannot prosper without peace. Relationship cannot prosper without peace. But when peace comes, then power also comes. Because peace is power. So, I have unlocked for you how the seven spirits are hidden inside here. Then, verse 13, one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these who are arrayed in white robes? From where do they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. Right? Hey, this is the elders talking. Right? So, remember, when God asks a question, even when angels ask a question, and even when you know Jesus asks a question, it is because they know. But they want to find out whether we know. So John says, well, you know. <laughs> you know. And he says, These are those who came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They will hunger no more, nor will they thirst any more, neither will the sun strike them nor burn them. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will feed them and will lead them unto living fountains of waters. God will wipe away all the tears from their eyes. So, during the tribulation period after the rapture, a lot of people the Antichrist go on a slaughter. People die by the millions, even billions. He thought the tsunami wiped away people. And we pray, you know, in 2029, that, that through our prayers, we minimize the people who die. But the Antichrist will slaughter human people. It's a bloodbath. And so as we conclude and look over this whole Revelation thing. Uh, two things we want to point out to, of course, those the tribulation saints, they are there. And uh, one thing about this group, do you notice this group is in one chapter? The 144,000. And also the tribulation saints. See, they call them the special tribulation saints. And, uh, they, uh, and, and they are there. They die in tribulation. In chapter 20 of Revelations, chapter 20 of Revelation, it only shows one group, but, and it says here, and um, about a, a thousand years, I saw thrones and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, had not received his mark on their foreheads or in their hand. These are, these are the tribulation saints, talking about the same group. It says, And they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. They are part of the millennium. By the grace of God. But the rest of the day did not live again until the thousand years were finished. The rest of the day does not refer to those in Christ. It, because everyone in Christ will be resurrected. But the rest of the day talking about the other humans who do not know God. They will be raised on the judgment day. And he said this is the first resurrection, blessed and holy. He said who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. They shall be priests of God and of Christ shall reign with him a thousand years. So all who are in Christ will be having their different roles and different job. But for this, they have a job on the planet Earth itself. Many of us will be all over the universe. In the thousand years, the whole universe is quote unquote. I cannot use the word evangelize, but I got no, no words. Evangelize the universe. 
But evangelize not that getting them more again. Evangelize is we teach them about the Lamb in Christ before we all enter into the new heaven, new earth. Do you know that before we enter the new heaven, new earth, every single planet that God has created in the universe must be taught about the Lamb. And up to now, many of those planets that haven't fallen, they are in the pristine zone. Those that have fallen are in the warfare zone, which is our zone. Now the warfare zone one in the tribulation, uh, in the millennium, is being repopulated, being continued on. But the pristine zone also need to talk, be taught about the heaven. Because when we all go to new heaven, new earth, the knowledge of the new revelation of Christ, whose new name is Lamb of God, must be there. Because the earth will become the center of the universe. And he says the Lamb will be there with the Father. And the light of the Lamb will light the whole new heaven, new earth. That's why the whole universe has to be taught. So those who are not on the earth in the millennium, they are sent to all the different planets. Everyone in Christ has a job to do. Now, you notice, I turn to chapter 20. There's a missing group. What about the 144,000? Where do they stand? Where are their places? If you look very carefully, both at chapter 7, and then later we go to chapter 14. Let's go back to chapter 7. Now we know that chapter 7 refers to those who are in the millennium. And look at some of the things that are mentioned about them. Here, who's the ending, all the things about them. He says that they are before the throne of God, serve Him day and night in His temple, He sits on the throne who will dwell among them. So these are part of their preparation during the, the time until they got a chance at the millennium. These are the tribulation saints. And the Lamb did that to them. Now, the 144,000, they are sealed in chapter 7. But look at chapter 14. Chapter 14. In chapter 14, because these two chapters are connected, it talks about the 144,000. It says the Lamb and the 144,000. Then I look and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder, and I heard the sound of the harpies playing their harps. They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne. New song. And the elders the four living creatures, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one, look at that, no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed. So these 144,000 were very special. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgin. So all the 144,000 do not get married. They remain single all their lives. And they all met. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men being first fruits to God, to the Lamb, and in their mouth was found no deceit, and they are without fall before the throne of God. So there are certain things mentioned about them. Now we know when you compare the original that when God made men, and split them the male and female. That no matter how perfect the man, no matter how perfect the woman, they are not perfect unless they are together. So what about these 144,000 who are men? So when I asked the Lord that, what about uh, the other half of them? Where did he disappear to? And the Lord showed something interesting to me. That's outside of here. He showed that there are many, many uh, women who dedicate themselves in the church age. And there are 104, and their soulmates of these 144,000 are actually in the church age. And somehow the two are matched, 
and they link them back to the millennium. To the millennium. These are like special forerunners in the millennium. There's a special work that they have, special tasks that they have. And uh, these new songs that they have, and uh, following the Lamb wherever he goes. Look at the word, being first fruits. You know, the first fruits all, has always also been an uh, analogy for resurrection. You have that in 1 Corinthians 15. When the Old Testament people were resurrected, the book of 1 Corinthians 15 called them first fruits. Uh, here is where the verse is. When you talk about uh, those saints who were resurrected and he was buried and then he was seen and uh, raised from the dead. And um, then and Christ is raised from the dead in verse 20. Now Christ is risen from the dead and has become first fruits. The word first fruits has been used in the Bible of resurrection. And that is why chapter 7 is unique. Because chapter 7 of the book of Revelations ties to those who have been kept apart. Of course, the difference is the 144,000 never died. They were raptured up in a mid-tribulation rapture. And then they come again in the millennium. And those who are also raptured in the rapture, they are also part of the millennium. So these are all taken and have their role. And of course, all the Old Testament saints and all those in the first generation, all that, they are also part of the resurrection and they got different, different roles to function. It is, I call, uh, spreading the knowledge of the Lamb of God in the whole universe. With the earth being the center and it's still part of the whole earth. So in the 144,000 and the ceiling that take place, that uh, something changed when the seal comes on you. And that is why the seal is also like a mark. And that is why when, after the rapture, the devil come up with a mark of the beast. It is not just a natural mark. It's not just a computer chip. It's not just something natural. When that mark comes on a human being, something changed. It must be. Look at the look at the fact here. We've got to understand what happens in the ceiling. Okay, look at the word mark, which I already have highlighted here. And um, in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 13, you will have that. But let me jump through here. It says in what the beast will do. He causes all both small and great, rich, poor, free, slave to receive a mark on their right hand. And we saw what it, on the right hand, we saw in the vision, it was actually the right thumb. And very interesting, and nowadays they use a the thumbprint. Next time you go, no need your passport. You just scan your passport and then you put your thumbprint. Now, now still need your passport. Next time they say, wow, no need lah. Just use the thumbprint. Oh, we do not know how the world is going to change. But it's not going to be allowed to be in full manifestation after the rapture. So it says, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name now this mark is so serious that the angel said in verse 9 if anyone worships the beast or his image and receive his mark on his forehead or his hand he shall drink from the wrath of God so it is not something like you can you can like guess a group of people and then they fainted, they sleep, you know, anesthesia them, then you secretly put mark on them, then they are lost. The salvation is lost. It cannot be so easy. And even if that were to happen to a real born again person, uh, I believe what will happen is the mark cannot take. 
Because it must be something that changed a person's nature. For God to be so serious that He says, you know, that whoever received this mark, their name is actually blocked from the book of life. Very serious in the book of Revelations. And uh, talking about the mark again. Uh, okay. It says here, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word they who had not worshipped the beast of and had not received his mark. So receiving the mark means uh, the name gone out of the book of life. It's a very dangerous thing. It leads us to conclude that the mark must change a person. It cannot be something ordinary. So it must change the nature. Now if that is happening in the negative, where the, the Antichrist got some spiritual thing combined with natural, they become a mark. And once it come on people, their names are blocked for the book slam of life. If that is how it works, how much more in the spiritual positive? Because the law works both ways. That when you receive a seal of God in your life, it changes your nature. And there are different seals you can receive. We received the first seal when we were born again. Ephesians chapter 1 says, You and I were sealed. And the seal was the Holy Spirit. So something changed. A seal is a very important thing. It, when it comes into your life, something changed. And then remember the promise to overcomer. When God put His name on your forehead, when God write, it is like putting a mark on you. He write His name. He write New Jerusalem. And He write your new name. And He write the Lamb's new name. So each time it happens, part of your DNA changes. If you were to ask, what is the most remarkable, powerful thing that can change a person's nature? The seal of God. And it's so powerful, even in the Old Testament, when it doesn't have that powerful effect, you find that in the Old Testament, that when God marks, even the whole spiritual world knows about it. See, in the book of Ezekiel, he saw the same vision that I described at the beginning. It was a type of angel who had a horn of, of ink. And then when he marked a person, Something changed in a person. Something is sealed. Says, and he says in Ezekiel chapter uh, here, chapter nine, uh, in verse three. And he called to the man. He saw the cherub, and he says he saw a man clothed with linen. That's an angel, who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. Put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over the abominations they have done with it. That means good, good men. And uh, who, who, who don't like all this idol worship. And they really cry to God. And he says, go after him through the city. And when he says, when the judgment came, when the city was being slaughtered by all the conquerors, uh, people who conquered the city, he says, utterly slay the old, the young, the maidens, the little children, the women. But, he says, do not come near anyone on whom is the mark. Now, when the soldiers come in, they cannot see the mark. It's a spiritual mark. But there is an angel assigned to each one. So that maybe if the person is exposed, the, the soldiers come in, they were blinded, they cannot see. Or something prevent them from killing them. Some protection. And it was a very physical killing. Imagine, if it's so powerful in the old days when you got arrow, you got sword, and you got spear, today, bullets, bombs, also you're protected when you have that mark. There is such a thing as a mark. When you're mark. Something changed in the nature. And that's why I talk about some mark that God wants to do. 
as we move into the sec second set of seven years. Because I discovered about the vision that I saw of this angel, and there's a whole group of other angels because I saw thousands of people all ready to be marked. And in two years, in these two years, I saw, because when I asked the Lord what is going to happen since we just come back from Madaba and we all prepare for the second set seven years, the Lord says that in 2022, between now and 2022, in 2022, you will be exactly where God wants you, the right place, the right country, the right city. But now, He has sent this angel with a mark that when you, that's why I ask everyone, and sometimes like I ask, and some before coming, in, I ask, you know, uh, yeah, say, yeah, do you know where you're going to be in 2022? Yeah, I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ask Colin, Colin, do you know? Colin say, oh, I'm still praying. I say, okay. What is going to happen is that the Lord after the tree will already start revealing to you, His Spirit, to you when you'll be in 2022. And as I saw the vision of thousands of people going to different places, some go to place to build altars, some just go to place, some just pray walk, some just land on the place and go off. The moment they do that, and you go to the place where you're going to be in the next, in the year 2022, if you know, if you don't know, pray that you know. When you touch the place physically, this angel mark. And then once you mark, remember I said the other group of angels I saw, which is the type of angels that are, uh, like those types, they're similar type of angels that are assigned to altars. They will mark the exact place we're going to be. And I saw some people, the angel even go to the house before the house is bought by them, where they're going to stay. Sometimes the angel pop himself on a hill or whatever and start drawing all circumstances of the person. He will release the open door documents or anything physically. And with the angel that is like watching over the place, a group of ministering spirits that are in charge of working in the natural to help you to reach the place. And this is going to be accelerated in every single person in this world. That's a powerful thing. And when you look at this 144,000, you say, wow, this scene must be some powerful thing. Yes, but they represent the old covenant. And I saw it's because they were part of the 144,000, which were together with a part of New Jerusalem as a layer of foundation. But in the church age, you and I have many more seals than even they could receive. Many more seals than they could receive. And these are the among the promises to the overcomers uh, that are already there. Although they sang a song, there are songs that will come from you in multitude. They sang a song. You and I sing the songs of Christ. Many more songs. Because you have the promise of many more things written upon your life. And you're a pillar in the temple of God. Uh, the call of the church is different. The seal is different. But the seal is powerful. As you saw, uh, in uh, that which God says and uh, promised to the overcomers that He says, first He give you a white stone on the stone a new name. Then as you draw closer and closer to Him, He, give, he gives the morning star. Then you reach another point where He says, I will write on him the name of my God. His Father's name written. That's like a seal. Then you go another layer of seal. The name of the city of my God. New Jerusalem. Then you have another third layer of seal. You receive sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now you got this special seal. That he writes on you land of God. Jesus' name. Something changed. 
you are not just with the Lamb. Because the 144,000 are with the Lamb. You are part of the expression of the Lamb. Remember, we are the body of Christ. We are missing Jesus. He is the head. We are the body. You are with the Lamb. Because the church age is different by saying each seal that you have changes your inner nature. When God touches you on the forehead. And many more things are going to be received. And I conclude with what's happening in February in this country, 2022, 2020. When the first seven thunders went to the first seven churches walk, and he just walked, and in one of the towns he walked to the north, to the south, uh, east to the west and then he did a bit north and south that is after Pergamos then later on when he went to Asia he saw the same vision but this time he saw that when he was walking in that little place uh, in one of the seven churches he was figuratively and prophetically walking on the whole and that's why in February, the seal is that it seals you into your place in 2022. Where? Where you're going to be, where you're going to be. So between now and then, and also after, some of you will be doing after, that within the next two years, where you know God wants you to be, you might have to pay a visit, uh, or go there and be an altar, or just pray and walk. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. If you don't know where you're going to be, keep praying, because God is specially revealing to everyone where you're going to be in 2022. Because the year 2022, I saw, was a key year. It's like everyone must be in the right place, and then there will be something like a, what should I call it? spirit quake. A movement from God. It is like a layer of uh, signs and wonders released all over the world. Because that is the timeline of God. And when you receive it, you begin to be commissioned by God. All over the world. So in the next seven years, these first two years, God is going to lead you to be physically exactly where he wants you to be. Even right to the right mountain, right house, right position, right place. And there, like the song says, you will be an altar to the Lord. And there, you will experience the next wave that God is releasing. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you. When we look at this story, in chapter 7, it is exactly the timeline you want us to. As we teach the book of Revelation 7, though we never organize it, it's the exact timeline to teach chapter 7 after Madaba Mukave. And it's exactly as you showed. And I was in Queen Saint Lord, when you showed the vision of this angel with the ink ready to mark your people to seal each one into the year 2022. To be where you want us to be. To flow in this glorious move of your Holy Spirit of which every one of us have our place in you. To grow into the fullness of perfection until you're ready to release a spiritual awakening, a refreshing from on high, the restoration of all things, that all the miracle signs and wonders of both the Old and New Testament will be fulfilled in our timeline, the year 2022. In these two years, bring your people to the exact place you want them to be. Let your perfect will be done. And in these days of the ten toes, establish the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven in us. 
And we know, Father, we are your kingdom. Amen. The kingdom is not just a place. The kingdom is the temple. Yes. And we are your third temple. Amen. And we are not at 144,000 because in Hebrews chapter 2, it is Jesus who sings through us because we are part of the Lamb. We thank you, Father. Fulfill each one of our destiny. Bless each one of those out there who are hearing this word. And everyone whose spirits that I saw were in the tree, even though they physically were not there. Bless each one. And cause each one to receive your message and your call and your angel that you sent for to tell each one where to go, where to move, where to be. We only want your perfect will. Nothing less than that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give Jesus a good kind of offering. And God bless you.